This video covers the second half of section 4.1, which is over subspaces of a vector space. So what is a subspace? Well, a subspace, again, of a vector space. So let's just remember for a moment that we just talked about vector spaces, and we know that there were 10 axioms that needed to be satisfied. Those are already satisfied for V, which is the vector space. So we're saying a subspace of that, H, um, has values or has vectors that fit the following properties. A, the zero vector of V is in H. So for instance, let's say I've got V. So this is just my random vector space containing whatever I want it to contain, really. Within that, smaller or equal to V is H, which is a subspace. And so notice I've drawn it inside V, which means it contains values that are in V. So let's say 312 was not in V, then it's also not in H. So it has to be something that's already in V in order for it to be in H. It's a subset. So the first one is the zero vector. So what I'm saying is, let's say these are you know, our three vectors. The zero vector, zero, 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 must be in H in order for it to be a subspace. Also, we need to know, and again, this we would say that, Z, uh, let me change colors here, that zero belongs to H. And again, zero means the zero vector. H is closed under addition, says that if you've got, say, vector u and vector v that are in h, so u and <laughs> apparently u again, u and v that are in h, then if I take u plus v, that must also be in h. So u plus v must also be in h. Also, we need to say that H is closed under scalar multiplication. So if U is in H, then C U is in H for all C's that are real numbers. So I should be able to take my vector U times anything, and that should also, that resulting vector um, that has been multiplied by the scalar should also be within H. So those are the three properties. Now keep in mind that V has already met these 10 axioms. So in, for H, we really just need to check that these still hold true for that smaller, typically smaller subset. Um, I would also point out that every subspace is then a vector space. So once we meet this requirement using these three properties, those subspaces are all vector spaces. So we don't have to then check the 10 axioms. We only have to check these three. Uh, we can also say that every vector space is a subspace, and that means it's a subspace of itself. So as I said, H could be the exact same size as V, or it could be that that vector space is a subspace of some larger vector space. Here's a fairly straightforward practice question for us to look at together. So notice I have 0, 0, which is the 0 vector. And I'm asking, is this 0 vector a subspace of R2? So I could have just as easily said, is the 0 vector and not specified that it was uh, 2. Um, two rows, a subspace of Rn, and my solution here would be the same. So essentially I'm saying that H is only the zero vector. That's it. So the zero vector of V is an H? Well, yes, because the zero vector is H, and so obviously that is an H. H is closed under addition. Well, if I take the zero vector plus the zero vector, I get the zero vector, which is in H, and therefore it is closed. So closed under multiplication, I'm sorry, addition, simply means if I take any 
two uh, values within H and add them together that that new value is in H as well. And that, of course, is true. H is closed under scalar multiplication. Again, it's saying if I take anything in H and multiply it by a scalar, that result is in H. So again, if I take C, any C times the zero vector, I will get the zero vector. And we already know the zero vector is in H. Therefore, yes, this is true not only for this particular vector, 0, 0, the zero vector for R2, but really for any Rn. Here's another question for us to look at. Let's let P be the set of all polynomials with real coefficients, so real number coefficients, and V be the space of all real valued functions. So they're telling me here that V is the space of real valued functions, meaning V is, does meet all of those 10 axioms. I don't have to check the axioms for V but V is the space of all real valued functions. So not just polynomials, but any real valued function. The question is, is P, which is the set of all polynomials with real co coefficients, is that a subspace of V? So I've just sort of jotted down the basics of those three properties that we need to check. So I wrote zero vector, but here essentially I'm saying zero polynomial. Is that in the set? Well, obviously, it would make sense that I could have the polynomial zero. That would be um, the set. It would be in the set of all polynomials with real coefficients. And so, yes, that is in the subspace. Closed under addition. So we've kind of talked about this already. If I had P of T, which was A0 plus A1, T1, T to the first plus A2, t squared, etc. And I won't say etc, etc, because someone had an issue with that and left me a comment about it. Thanks so much. So this would be b sub 0, and then whoops, b sub 0, nope, b1, t to the first. We get the idea. Oh, I keep switching a's and b's. B n t to the n. So closed under addition. If I added these together, we talked about how this would look. I would have a 0 plus b sub 0 plus a sub 1 plus b sub 1 t to the first, etc. And would that then be a polynomial with a real coefficient? Yes, it would. Same thing with multiplication. If I were multiplying these instead, it's going to look like this without the addition sign in between. Um, and it's going to be a little more involved than this because obviously it would involve some distributive property. But it's very clear that if I took a0 times b sub 0 and times b sub 1, etc., that all of my values will in fact have real coefficients and there would be some combining of like terms, but yes, my resulting um, equation would in fact be a polynomial with real coefficients. So I didn't really write down anything for that, but hopefully that made sense to you. Yes, the set of P would be a subspace to all real valued functions. How about this one? Is R2 a subspace of R3? So you might be thinking, well, sure, R2 is smaller than R3 because 2 is smaller than 3. But remember our cute little picture that we drew before. If this is R3, which would, of course, be any vector with three entries, is it possible that R2 is inside of there, R2 being vectors with two entries. Does that even meet the initial requirement before I start checking properties? Is it in fact a subset? No, it is not because R2 has two values and R3 has three values and so R2 is not a subset. Now if I wanted to take R2 and say R2 has 0, 0 and I'm going to add a 0 as the third entry and R2 has 1, 2, and I'm going to add 0 as a third entry. These certainly do 
belong in R3 as well as R2. Um, sorry, these certainly do belong in R3, but then they would no longer be in R2. So R2 cannot be a subspace of R3, again, because it doesn't fit even the same pattern. Let's do a harder practice question. If I'm given that V1 and V2 are vectors in the vector space V, and H spans V1, V2, is H a subspace of V? So before we go about checking our properties, just recall that this is telling me that I should be able to write everything as a scalar, whoops, a scalar times the vector plus a scalar times the vector, and that's what it's going to look like to be in H. I can write it as a linear combination of those vectors. So is the zero vector in H? That's what they're asking. Is the zero vector in H? Well, I can certainly write zero V1 plus zero V2, and that would in fact be the zero vector and it would be in H, so yes. Is it closed under addition? Meaning if I have U and V, that belong to H, so they already have to belong to H. The question is, when I add them together, is the result also in H? So that's what I need to check. And I wanna caution you here, because I see this a lot on homework and even quizzes and tests, where someone will tell me that vector U is 2V1 plus 3V2, and that vector V is negative 4V1 plus V2. Well, that's well and good, except these are specific values. And in order for us to prove anything, we need to use obviously generalized values. So instead of plugging numbers in here, I'm going to say, say S1V1 and S2V2 and T1V1 and T2V2 because now it's not a specific number, because remember with specific values, I would have to check all of the specific values, which is impossible because there's an infinite amount of specific values. So use these generalized values, then show that with these generalized values that my result would in fact be in H. So let's take U plus V. By combining like terms, I would have S1 plus T1 V1 plus S2 plus T2 V2. Does that belong in H? Yes, it does. Again, whoops, don't cross it out. It can be written as a linear combination of vectors V1, V2. Lastly, let's look at closed under multiplication. And again, recall this is scalar multiplication. I didn't specify that when I wrote down closed under multiplication, but that's what we're talking about. We're saying C, u is that in h again assuming that u is in h as i said before then is cu in h and so let's take a look at what cu would look like that would be c times s1 v1 plus c times s2 v2 and again just by using some parentheses here, it's very clear that yes, this belongs in H. So we've sort of generalized it um, for V1, V2, but no matter how many vectors we have in a vector space, then it will always be true that the span of those vectors is a subspace of V. That's theorem one in your textbook. I'm not going to write it down, but again, you could prove it for any number of vectors the way that we did here for just two vectors. Let's do a question now using theorem one. As, as you recall, we just talked about theorem one that says if we have vectors in the vector space V, then the span of those vectors um, is a subspace of V. So here we are asked to let H be the set of all vectors in the form 5a plus b, b minus c, 2a plus c. And then it says either find a set of vectors that spans R3 or a counterexample. So they're asking us to essentially find V1, 
V2, V3, or show that that's not a possibility. And this is actually far more straightforward than it might appear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I've got my 5a plus b, b minus c, 2a plus c, then can't I write this as a times v1 plus b v2 plus c v3, which would show that it's a set of vectors that spans R3. So if the, essentially what I'm saying is if I'm able to find that v1, v2, v3, then I've done exactly what they asked. I've found the set of vectors, which would be v1, v2, v3, that spans R3. So how am I going to do this? Again, very straightforward. This is 5a plus b, so that's 5a plus 1b plus 0c. This is b minus c, so 0a, 1b, negative 1c, and then 2a plus c, so that's plus 0b plus 1c. And voila, I found the set of vectors s to be 5, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. Last one for you to try on your own. Press pause, try this question. When you are ready, press play to see how you did. So likely you started about this in the same way we did the last one. And we said 3a plus b, 4a minus 5b. And then you might have said, oh, well, this guy looks a little different. So maybe I'm just going to have a 0, 4, 0 as a constant. And then a times some vector and b times some vector. But this actually is not the case. So it says either give vectors that span vectors of that form or find a counterexample. So I can show the, a counterexample showing that, in fact, the zero vector does not belong to H, and therefore it cannot be a vector space. And the reason for that is, again, because of that four. So in this case, I don't need to do any other work except to show that H is not a vector space. And that's it.